Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and Founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm going to show you the best way to upgrade your hearing aid technology to make sure that your new hearing aids are actually providing you with more benefit. Coming up. If you've had your hearing aids for over four years now, there is a solid chance that the new technology that's currently available would significantly outperform your old devices and at a bare minimum have new features that would make your overall experience a lot better. Since most major hearing aid manufacturers come out with new hearing aids approximately every two years, over the course of four years, that would mean that the technology that's currently available is two generations newer than what you're currently wearing. However, even if hearing aid technology is newer and designed with more features to help you hear even better, it does not guarantee that the amount of benefit that you would receive from these new hearing aids would justify spending a few thousand bucks to do the upgrade. But how do you figure out if the new hearing aid technology is actually better than your old technology? Because sometimes the answer to this question is not an easy one to figure out. That's why I want to show you the six step process that I take with every one of my patients who are upgrading to new hearing aid technology to make sure that they get more benefit with that technology technology than they did with their previous devices. But before I take you through this process, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out my channel because it gets these videos in front of a bigger audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit that subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos and I release multiple new videos every single week. That being said, I really appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what these six steps are. These steps include identifying which hearing aids to upgrade to, matching old amplification settings, creating new amplification settings, activating new digital features, completing at least a two week trial, and performing validation outcome measures. Let's go ahead and start talking about identifying which hearing aids to upgrade to. Generally speaking, I'm a huge fan of upgrading to a technology that is in the same brand as the ones that my patients were previously using. Every hearing aid manufacturer processes sound a little bit differently, and if my patient's brain has already been tuned in to how that manufacturer processes sound, there's no reason to take them out of that particular brand. However, there are exceptions to this. For instance, if there is a hearing aid feature that is only available in one particular hearing aid brand, and my patient really wants that feature, then we're going to have to switch to that particular brand in order to get that feature. It also makes sense if they were never fully satisfied with that older technology, it would make sense at that point to jump ship and go to a different brand to test it out. I also recommend selecting new hearing aids that are at the same technology level or a higher technology level than the previous hearing aids that my patient was wearing. Obviously here we're looking for an improvement in hearing performance and it would not make sense to actually go down in tech level. For example, if you you are currently wearing the Oticon Open 1 devices and you're looking at upgrading to the Oticon More line of hearing aids, you would not want to go with an Oticon More 2 or an Oticon More 3. You would want to go with an Oticon More 1. All right, so once you know which hearing aids you're upgrading to, the next thing that you want to do is actually match the amplification settings of the new hearing aid with the amplification settings of the old hearing aid. To do this, I perform real ear measurement on my patient's old hearing aid settings just to make sure that I know exactly how much amplification they've been receiving for the past four plus years so then I can match that amplification level with the new hearing aids. I will do this matching inside of a dedicated programming inside of the new hearing aid so the patient can have an apples to apples comparison of the new hearing aids versus the old hearing aids at the same amplification settings. This is an example of using real ear measurement to match amplification settings. The solid pink curves represent the best amplification settings of this patient's old hearing aids. The turquoise curve represents the programming of this patient's new hearing aids. The goal here is not to match the turquoise hash mark curves which represent the new prescription for this patient's hearing loss. The goal is to match the patient's previous hearing aid amplification settings by overlapping the solid turquoise curve with the solid pink curve. This way, if there's a perceived improvement in the new hearing aids, we know that it is due to the new hearing aid technology being better than the old hearing aid technology. However, I also recommend creating at least one new custom program inside of the new hearing aids that we can use to match to the patient's hearing loss prescription precisely, because typically with new hearing aid technology, we are better able to match hearing loss prescriptive targets. This is an example of how to use real ear measurement to match the patient's new hearing loss prescription represented by the purple 
hash mark curve. The previous amplification settings of this patient's hearing aids that you saw me match earlier is the solid pink curve. And the new amplification settings with the patient's new hearing aids are represented by the solid purple curves. The closer the solid curves are to the purple hash mark prescription targets, the better these hearing aids will perform, giving the patient a true understanding on how much better these hearing aids will really be. This is why performing real ear measurement with new hearing aids is so important. And if you would like to learn more about real ear measurement, I will link a video down in the description. Then it's all about adding all of the new digital features that we typically see every few years from hearing aid manufacturers, whether this is better noise reduction, directionality, impulse noise reduction, Bluetooth capabilities, tap controls, and even other wireless accessories. Of course, some of these new features won't necessarily help you hear substantially better, but it is kind of fun to have new features on your new hearing aids to improve your overall hearing aid experience. Once all of this programming is completed inside of the new hearing aids, then it's time to actually take these hearing aids home and use them in your normal daily environments. It does you virtually no good just to do an in-office demo of hearing aid technology because that is definitely not indicative of your normal daily life. Besides, it takes the human brain approximately two to four weeks to adapt to new amplification settings. So being able to make an assessment right there in the office on the same day is virtually impossible. You really need to take those devices home, let your brain adapt to them so you can get a full experience. However, before leaving their office, you should really be coming up with several very specific listening situations that you can use as a gauge to determine how much benefit you're actually getting from the new hearing aid technology. We call this performing hearing aid validation. This way you can get a much better understanding of very specific situations that the new hearing aid technology is helping you in and not helping you in. Evaluating hearing aid performance should never be done by asking you general questions like how does that sound or do you feel like you're hearing better? If you don't measure your performance with a validated outcome measure like the client or oriented scale of improvement or the abbreviated profile of hearing aid benefit or any one of the other validated outcome measures, then it's much more difficult for you to identify if you're actually getting significantly more benefit with a new technology versus your old technology. If the performance improvements are not enough to justify the cost of upgrading your hearing aids, then it may not be time to upgrade your hearing aid technology or it may be time to actually try a different brand. Now there is one other reason that you may want to continue on with upgrading to new technology, even if you do not see a substantial improvement in your overall experience with hearing aids is if you're spending a lot of money just getting a lot of out of warranty work done on your hearing aids it may make more sense to actually take that money and invest it in new technology that has a warranty attached so there you have it those are the six steps that i take each one of my patients through if they are going to attempt upgrading to new technology to make sure that they can get an accurate evaluation of that new technology and to actually just help them experience the most benefit that they possibly can out of those new devices. So if your hearing aids are four years old or older, then this step-by-step -step process is a much better way for you to evaluate the performance of your new hearing aid technology compared to the more traditional method, which is just hitting the auto program button and asking you how they sound. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. And if you wanna see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com. Oh, <laughs>